Today's walk from my front door in Matlock begins on Jackson Road. Heading west took me past the excellent Thorn Tree Inn. Well, the Thorn Tree is another of Matlock's great pubs. It's a wonderful place. And particularly in the summer, when you can just sit outside the front on the patio and you get absolutely lovely views of a matlock. Can't beat it. Continuing west, I descended onto Smedley Street to pass near two more of Matlock's great pubs. Firstly the Sycamore and then the Laburnum, as I turned right up Farley Hill. Well, there's a laburnum down there. That's another great pub in Matlock. So from the Sycamore to the laburnum, both great pubs. We're spoiled here in Matlock. But again, look at the views we've got. So can you blame me for enjoying myself living here? It was a steep but short climb as I continued up Farley Hill. Beyond the row of houses to my right, the ascent became much more of an incline, so I was able to enjoy a more leisurely walk with great views over the Peak District to my left. After just under a mile, just to be on the entrance to Tax Farm, I turned off left along a track marked with a footpath sign to Ladygrove and Sidnap. I was now starting to descend again as I slowly made my way towards the valley below. I've lived in Matlock for, well, in another three months' time, because it's the 19th of September 2020 today. So in another three months' time, by the end of this year, I will have lived in Matlock for 18 years. Wow, can't believe where the time's gone, really. As I said, I've lived here longer than anywhere else I've ever lived. And it just seems the older you get, the quicker time goes. But yeah, it's, this is, it's lovely around here. This particular walk I'm doing now, I mean, obviously, in 2003, the year I first moved to Matlock, I got to know the Peak District very well in that first year because I made a point of getting out every weekend to do lots of different walks. But this particular walk was one I did during the summer of that year because when we had the longer evenings, the lighter evenings, there were quite a few walks I did after work. And this was just one of the walks I did. I've done a few variations of this walk in more recent times, particularly during lockdown. I did loads of walks from my front doorstep then, when we first went into lockdown and weren't supposed to do any unnecessary travel. I did lots and lots of walks on my front doorstep. So I did a little bit of this one earlier this year, but I've not done this particular walk I'm doing now since 2003. So it's lovely to do it again, actually. The track eventually became a narrow path, which led to the edge of woodland. As I entered the woods, I bore right at a junction. Oh, flipping heck, here we go again. Oh. Actually, that wasn't too bad this time at all.
right. My way is actually left down here to follow the stream. But I just want to go over that footbridge, just a short detour. But there's something I'm hoping to get a closer look at. The detour took me over a footbridge crossing Sidnet Brook. At the other side, I climbed up steeply as my path soon exited the woods. Okay, that was a steep but thankfully short climb, but I just wanted to get a closer look at Sidnet Hall. Sydney Hall is a large mansion that stands at the end of a long tree-lined avenue just off Sydney Hill below Darley Moor. Sir Francis of Cheverell Darwin purchased the 80 hectares Sydney estate in the 1820s. Some years later, the architect J. Baron Wright was commissioned to extend the hall and refashion it in mock Tudor style. The house has now been subdivided into luxury apartments. It was worth a small detour just to see that. Okay, back down into the woods now. Okay, I've just got to follow this path which runs parallel with this stream and that'll take me down to Lady Grove. My path took me southwest through Sidnet Dale as it followed the course of Sidnet Brook. Reaching Potter Dam just off the path to the right, I came across another little cave. This one seems to go back quite a way as well. But it's very rocky underfoot, so I can see myself having a nasty accident here. But it narrows as well as you go further in, so I'm not sure how far back it does go, but I don't think I'll go back any further, so. But interesting, eh? I do find caves interesting, despite being claustrophobic about them, I do find them interesting. Back at the dam, I enjoyed the restful sight of one of three small reservoirs in this wooded valley. Heading back down the path, I eventually reached the last of the reservoirs as I arrived at Lady Grove. Okay, I'm now at Lady Grove. My path ended at a lane, which I followed past Lady Grove Mill, now used as warehousing storage facilities and offices. Reaching the B5057 below Sidnet Hill, 
I was in two dales, the name of which probably comes from the twin valleys of Halldale and Sidnetdale, which run on either side of the village. Once known as Toad Hole until 1850, Two Dales was a thriving community on the main Chesterfield to Bakewell route. The main industry was established at Ladygrove Mill, which first produced flax, then lace and then animal feed. The mill was water powered by the three reservoirs I just passed. Crossing the main road, I walked over to the Plough Inn. Well, I only ever came to the plough two times, I think. Nice pub from what I can remember. Closed now, though. I think the coronavirus pandemic has put pay to this place, sadly. So, but no, I used to work with a lady whose father ran it some years ago, before I came to Derbyshire. And uh, yeah, Carol used to work in the in the plough at Two Dales. So, so yeah, it used to be a really popular pub. Very popular pub, and people would come from miles around to come here, so it had a good reputation. Walking back to the main road, I followed it as it passed one of the most popular butcher shops in the area, the award-winning E.W. Coates. Before long, I reached the A6 at Darley Dale. I crossed to the other side to walk in front of the Whitworth Centre, originally opened in 1890 and funded by the estate of the late Sir Joseph Whitworth. In 2009 to 2010, the building underwent a £1.7 million refurbishment. Behind the Whitworth Centre, I walked into the lovely Whitworth Park, a tranquil, relaxing area for a lunchtime or weekend afternoon stroll. It contains over 10 acres of superbly landscaped grounds, with pleasant walks along tree-lined avenues and a picturesque lake, water features and plenty of rare and mature trees, which stand elegantly beside the pathways throughout the park. In 2003, the park was the subject of a three quarters of a million pounds refurbishment. Next to the park is Darley Dale Railway Station, today a station on Peak Rail, a preserved railway operating a steam and heritage diesel service for tourists and visitors. Peak Rail is over three and a half miles long and visitors can ride on the old trains between Matlock and Rosely South stations. Unfortunately, all services are currently suspended due to COVID, but it is hoped that in early 2021, it will be able to operate again. Something else on my to-do list. Still not ridden on peak rail yet. <sighs> Walking down to four lane ends, I turned left at the crossroads and followed the track parallel to the road, marked by a white peak loop signpost. I was now heading back towards Matlock. Soon, the track ran alongside the peak railway. In a short while, the River Derwent curved close by, so I decided to turn off this track to walk beside the river. Well, even though it's a straight route beside the railway line, I thought it would be more pleasant to walk beside the river. So it was not far to Matlock now. 
there's a clue there. So yeah, basically a nice gentle walk back home there. I was actually kidding myself just now when I said a gentle walk back home. This is the gentle bit I'm doing now, but I've still got one more climb to do. I should be climbing up to Upper Hackney up there. But it's worth it because the views from there will be very good. Very good indeed. My path beside the river slowly meandered back towards the railway line. OK, well, I could carry along the track beside the railway line. That actually goes right into the centre of Matlock, and then I'm very close to Crown Square, just got to walk up from there, and then I'll be home again. But, as I say, I want to go up to Hackney because I think it's a nice alternative. Leaving the Riverside and the Peak Railway line for the last time today, I took the path which headed northeast towards the A6. Reaching the A6, I crossed to Old Hackney Lane opposite and followed it as far as a footpath on the left, signposted to Upper Hackney. At the top, I came out onto another lane, along which I turned right to walk through Upper Hackney. This area of Matlock provides some brilliant views across the Peak District and the Derwent Valley. Well, that was the reason I wanted to walk up here to Upper Hackney, because there are some really good views over the area from here. Well, that's the end of another lovely walk. Another great walk I can do from my front doorstep. Back at the Laburnum now. Shall I have a drink? If I do, I've only got about a ten-minute wobble home. <laughs>